Sorry for that flub. Hello and welcome to Fender Play Live. I'm your host, Eugene Edwards, and we've got another fun episode in store for you tonight. We're going to be diving into major seventh chords. They might sound scary, but if you know your basic major chords, you're already 95% there. And if you think this might be a boring show, think again. These chords are used by countless artists. Marvin Gaye, The Police, Joni Mitchell, Rush, The Cranberries, as you just heard, to name a few. And they're a great way to instantly vary your playing and add some style to your sound. And as always, stick around for the Fender Play gear giveaway. Okay, now helping me out today is our illustrious return guest, the incomparable leader of the Justice League, Justice West. Justice. Yeah, what's up, everybody? Oh, man, good. it's always good to see you. Yeah, great to see you too, man. I have returned to Earth from space. I gotta say, I I particularly have really, really dug the uh, the technique of the weeks things you've done for Fender. I think they're incredibly well done. You explain things really, really, really well. I got a lot of value out of them. So hopefully, people after the show will will, will look those up. Yeah, no, those have been so much fun to do. Just sharing information and mm -hmm. stuff that's helped me through gigs and just through enjoying playing guitar in general. Well, it's always a joy to hear you play guitar. Also, we're joined, as always, by the one and only Dylan Calajuri. Dylan, say hi. Hello, world. Hello. Oh, he Look at that guy. Look at that face. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so uh, you Fender fans are probably familiar with Justice through his techniques of the week, as I mentioned, and his previous appearances on this show. But if you're not... Justice is a multi-instrumentalist. He's played with artists like Miguel and Vince Gill, and he's one hell of a guitar player, so we're thrilled to have him back on. And Justice, uh, tell us about the guitar that you have there and, and demonstrate it, please. I have a Fender American Ultra Strat. This is like, this is my baby. Like, this is my blue child. And uh, it sounds like this. <laughs> <laughs> wow wow beautiful and uh yeah you're smooth as butter on that thing of course and dylan what are you holding and can you demonstrate that oh was this kind of hard to miss maybe this is listen the... <laughs> <laughs> this is the parallel universe tele magico that's right magico it should sparkle and give you a, a vision into another dimension uh so this guitar has so many features it's going to be difficult to cover basically we have the f hole and keep mm -hmm. that keep it adult folks okay and then we've also got uh silver hardware i mean we've got the the bird's eye maple neck these pickups sound amazing i'll just give you a little taste of it let's see since we're doing major seventh chords mm. so this thing oh, yeah. honestly it's it's a it's a machine of it's kind of like the the book the bookcase in Narnia. I mean, you could just open up, and go to another, a whole nother. <laughs> what a lovely analogy. I think I saw a star fall out. <laughs> I yeah 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 just yeah. If I ever go into uh, stage magic, I think I'm going to call myself Telly Magico. Telly Magico. Dude, um, okay, guys, let's get tight. to it. If you, <laughs> if you have questions about major seventh chords throughout the show, drop them in the comments, and we'll do our best to get to them. And check out the links in the description after the show for some Fender Play lessons on major seven chords that'll help you further hone your skills. Now, Justice, uh, let's start off with the basics. What exactly is a major seventh chord? So when I first learned the major seven chord, which really helped me understand it was taking what would be a simple bar chord. So like if we have C, you have, you know, C, G, and C, or your first finger on the uh, first dot and your third finger and pinky finger on the second dot. Uh, and then you just take that pinky and you substitute it for your middle finger on the, what would be the fourth fret. And so what happens is you just get like this new color. Like this is like, okay, guitar. This is like, oh, heaven. You know what I'm saying? It just like <laughs> smoothens up the whole thing right there. So yeah, bar chords. And then you just change that to that. There you have it. Beautiful. It is a new color, and it is an e there is an easy way to make it happen. As we just saw, you use, use three notes. Uh, you change one of them from a regular chord, and that's how we constructed the major seventh chord. So we'll we'll be digging into that into the show. Um, and uh, now, can you obviously dem you demonstrated the difference between a major chord and a major seventh chord? Can you give us a few other positions of the neck or other you know, demonstrate the difference between a, a regular chord and a major seventh chord again? Yeah. So again, if we have C, if we expand this chord, like our regular cage C, you can 
then remove your first finger and just let that ring out. That's probably actually the easiest place you'll find it, like on the guitar. You can just like play these two notes and sound like a boss, you know? Right. <laughs> and only like because you're- a suave you're boss. A, a suave boss, of course. Uh, basso suave. Only because your your microphone stand was covering up your fret hand in that, in that oh, instance. Oh, snap. So, but, yes. but yeah, it's, there you go. Yeah, just C chord like this. Lord knows there's probably something covering my fret. And then the first finger off, off of the first fret of the B string, but I'm gonna play the open B string as was what Justice is doing, and you get this. So we can actually build them from our, our open caged uh, chords. Uh, now Justice, we're gonna be showcasing this chord in action throughout the episode, but can you give us a taste of major seventh chords in context? Can you play a song? Oh yes, I'm gonna play one of my favorites, uh, What's Going On by Marvin Gaye. Sweet. All right. Lovely, lovely. Thank you. What a great way to start off Thank the year you. here with a performance like that. So um, could you just point out, though, for us, which yeah. chords of all those you're playing, which ones were the major seven? We got C here. C is just like, it's the chord. It's the people's chord. Okay. There yes. You go. And that is my major seven that I kind of used all throughout the song. Right. Um, another great way to play it. You can mm -hmm. even play it up there, which is how I kind of set up that ending. You know, so major seven just 
opens up that color palette to then express even deeper an idea, you know, yeah. uh, with a song like this one, the contrast of the lyrics of talking about, you know, being kind to one another and, and treating each other nice, that major seven chord almost adds the further the coloring of the songwriting, you know? Mm -hmm. So like the chord literally supports the message of the song by making it smooth, you know, yeah. so. Yeah, nice and open, nice and evocative use of, of, of songwriting. Uh, we already have a question, which I'm, I'm glad, and I'm gonna actually have Dylan answer these. This is uh, coming to us from uh, YouTube, Adam Resendez wants to know what makes it a seventh chord. And Adam Manzanares, I think I said that right, asks what, what makes them seventh? Where do these numbers come from? Dylan, who put these numbers in our chords here, buddy? Well, uh, Pythagoras initially, but no, he, it's been a while since he was, he really <laughs> did. In fact, he named all the modes after islands near Crete, but we won't go quite that far oh, yeah, back. Let's, Phrygian let's, and, okay. Yeah, so we'll stay a little bit closer to this century. Anyways, please, please. why is it a seventh? What is going on here? Um, so in the musical alphabet, there are seven letters, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, right? Okay, so in the key of A, a major chord would have the notes A, let me get playing for you here, A, C sharp and E. Okay, so A, C, and E are one, two, three, A, mm -hmm. C sharp, E. Okay. So that's one, three, and five, right? Well, the seventh yes. would end up being the note G sharp or G. So we if have you continued counting up. Yeah. We would end yes. up at we would end up at the seventh. So we have A, C sharp, E, and then G sharp. And that's why it's called a seventh chord. And when you go up past that, you get into ninths and elevenths and so on. Well, so I'm sorry to interrupt, but if you went past that seven. Yeah. In that case, you are, keep counting, at eight. You're, You're at your eight. octave, hence yes. octave. So there is a way to kind of contextualize this uh, using some math, but that is why, yes, you're. I'm sorry to interrupt, but that's well, why that we have a number in our chord because we're And that's we're what I'll say, mm -hmm. even in my own career, like that just helps so much. Just like when you see seven there, you just take the note of the chord you're trying to play. So if it's a D, you start at D and you just count seven notes up the scale and there you have it, you know? And even with ninths and elevenths and stuff that we're gonna get to later, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure you guys are gonna cover all the stuff that people wanna know. We do a uh, show every week, we will get it all done, I promise. And one yeah, thing, that just last thing I, I wanna <laughs> say on this, you guys, is that if you are like completely confused about any of this, Fender Play is the resource for you yes. to, to go to. So if you type in major seventh chord, seventh, even just begin to spell the word seventh, it'll just pop right, it'll just be a million yeah. results. So yeah. this is gonna demystify all this for you by going to the site. This is kind of a primer. Fill in the blanks at the site if you're even just a tad bit interested or you wanna jump into the deep end on this, it's yeah. there. And you know, again, that that is kind of the, um the high level rundown in a way, but personally, I think it's easier to think of them as just a one note change in a major chord. Uh, again, you know, if I'm playing an A major chord here, just our open one right there, I find my root, the octave of it in this case, and I play that down half a fret and I have a major seven chord. Now, um, let's dive into the fun stuff though and talk about how they sound and why you should add them into your playing arsenal. Justice, how would you describe you started to mention earlier the sound of the major seventh chord let's let's just kind of talk about the feeling that it gives us yeah i think that the sound of the major chord definitely changes in context and so it can be a happy smooth or a solemn smooth mm -hmm. and so just even exemplifying that like if we go one major seven chord to another so let's say c major seven to g major seven Oh, actually, let's go F. C major seven, I don't even know, <laughs> to F. And that's like smooth, happy, you know? Mm. You know, that's just like, that sounds like, you know, some love and Valentine's Day and stuff. Kittens. You know, but if you go minor, you <laughs> know, so let's say we go like A minor to C major seven. Then it's kind of like, okay, so like putting it next to minor chords and just trying out different combinations is where you'll get the different tones. But the overall is just, it's smooth and it's it's got emotion. Yeah. You know, I, I, oh, go ahead. No, 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 please, please, sorry. Oh, no, I was just like, a regular major chord is just like inherently happy. Like you just play like, it's just like, yes. 
this one gives you some room to kind of like give a new kind of painting you know what i'm saying a new kind of picture so yeah it seems like it's the best of both worlds of that major and that minor in, in, yeah, in, in yeah. a way now and what genres use the major seventh chord really everything man i used to think it was just jazz until mm. i started listening to r&b and i'd be like oh marvin Gaye or curtis mayfield or aretha franklin or even like the doobie brothers or like yep. you can just go through like major sevens are everywhere but then even like in country music mm -hmm. you know like when they're really again trying to paint a story they'll use like all regular major chords and then get to the bridge and then be like ah oh, major seven and you're just like oh it just kind of sits a certain way absolutely uh, even in rock same thing you know just like further getting the story out there. I I definitely believe that, you know, every time we all pick up an instrument, um, even if we're not playing a song, you know, we have our own stories as musicians and naturally we play our story, you could say. And so uh, I think it's just awesome to have chords like the major seven to then expand your story out more as you go through your journey as a player. Hmm. Now, um, I want to go back to the song that you that you played, the, What's Going On, which yeah. is on Fender Play. Can yes. you demo that without the major seventh chord? I mean, could we hear it kind of like if it was just block triad sort of thing? Oh, yeah. So that just would be seconds, like you, the you, first verse. And yeah. so you come in, you're just like... So that's just regular major regular minor mm -hmm. then you throw in that major seven and it's like and it just instantly like becomes buttery you know yeah. i have a theory that 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 marvin probably used the major seventh all those sevenths really to because they're kind of more adult sound mm, yeah and the and the topics he wanted to cover going into that album were some grown-up things and i and yeah. i always want again it supported the, the feel and of the message, if you will. Um, mm. We're gonna look at some other tunes that you can learn on Fender Play that incorporate the major seventh chord. Now here's, this may be my introduction to major seventh chords when I, I was uh, a, a young pup, um, and it was The Police. It was Roxanne, which when we heard it on the radio, and I learned it, I just kind of played the top three strings as we generally hear it on the, uh, on the, on the record, we hear, uh, we just hear. And okay, fine. But then um, later on, I saw Sting do it solo, and he plays it like this. And I learned that version, and I and I realized that what I thought was, in, in, you know, I thought was a D minor because of the top three strings. Well, turns out it was a B flat major seventh. Andy Summers ah. just played those top three strings to make it more angular and new wave and rock. Mm. But in heart, in context, it really, they really were always jazz chords. So you can play them. In that case, I'm playing all six strings down for the most part. And you hear there's a whole new context. So I came across it via kind of this, this you know, this new wave anthem uh so that's an example again on fender play you can learn roxanne by the police but that's where i first kind of got acquainted with major seventh chords being that b flat major seventh and then the e flat major seventh up here at the, at the yeah. sixth fret mm. dylan um you've got an example for us yeah uh so another song that's on the site that you can check out that's got major seventh chords in it is heart of glass by blondie so uh, specifically in the chorus. So I'll play the notes, or excuse me, I'll play the two chords that are in the chorus as as regular chords, and then I'll switch them up and make them major mm -hmm. seven so you can hear the difference. <laughs> now, see for a spatial difference, perceptive in your hearing as you hear this. It should sound like a wider image. And that's what it is. That interval becomes a wider image in our mm. ears mind or our ears eye if you will so anyways <laughs> i'll play the uh, i'll play a little bit over the song I'll, I'll maybe do a couple of our page examples some 
uh, dyad examples, some different ways that you can apply this. And again, if these phrases sound weird to you, check them out on the site, arpeggios, dyads, different ways to approach things in soloing and solo passages. idea basically you know a lot of different ideas in there but it's it's showing you how just that adding that one note to your playing adding that one note which is actually a half step away from the root and can sound really odd if it's uh, voiced differently that's a major seventh chord uh, this is a major seventh chord excuse me I'm sorry this is this is a major seventh chord so if you hear it voiced that way but with the the root so it's, it adds this whole layer of spatial complexity to your playing. And it's something that if you dig that sound at all, jumping in is a great idea. It's a really cool thing to unlock. Yeah, and here yeah. I just thought of another example. Uh, it, it, having played a lot of rockabilly, a lot of Elvis Presley, at the end of Heartbreak Hotel, also on the site, uh, of, I could die, and the upright bass does this walk down. And then the guitar goes. Like, wow. Showbiz, big time yeah. right there. Yes. That is the showbiz chord. E it was the end seven. cap, you know. Right there, saying. Yeah. So. It's a, I don't know. It's, I, I've always, always loved the way they use that. Like, uh, yeah, yeah it makes, it. makes me smile. Super tight. Okay, so we've dug into what major seventh chords are and how they sound. But Justice, how might you incorporate these into uh, into one's playing? How, especially for somebody that might not be too familiar with major seventh chords. Well, I think that's where things start to get amazing because you can take any progression that you currently know and just major sevenify it so you know <laughs> for lack of a, a better term so like let's say you're just like you know open a to open g you know you can just oh there you go oh, okay. there we go Thanks. Like you can just take this and like check out this difference, even from going to A to G, which is actually a, a cool example. You go to e. I mean E, sorry. Oops. Sorry. <laughs> now with the major seven A. Yeah. It it almost creates a passageway to connect mm -hmm. to that other chord, which I think is so interesting. Because they're sharing just, that note. They're sharing that G yeah. sharp. Yeah. Exactly. So just tonally. Like that is just with a regular major chord. It just, it's just, it's two totally different things, but mm -hmm. it's so easy to apply. Uh, so that's what I would say, like as far as application, instead of overthinking or being like oh no where do i put it just like take something you know anything really and just you know find that octave flat it down and there you have it solemn sorry it's a solemn. Yes. Well, it, and, and we also learned from from some of the great songwriters how it how it's used and we can extrapolate from that one example again that's on the site is sometimes a major seventh chord it's in, it's uh, in the middle of a of a of a path uh, so meaning we're, we're moving from one chord to the next and we're just moving one note. So in the example of the Beatles, something, which is in, it starts on a C chord, we can play it in first position. So it's, you know, something in the way she moves. Yeah. Major seventh. And then a dominant seventh. Attracts me like no other lover. So it's just this movement. It's just this one note that's moving down in between those chords. So it can be a passing chord, so to speak, that way. Yeah. And, and, and if you're messing around with the chords, use it that way. Maybe you use a major mm -hmm. seventh chord, and it's going to lead you, the voice leading, 
will lead you to yeah. another chord. But that's yeah. what I would recommend personally is to get on Fender Play and just learn as many songs as possible because that is what will help you know when and when not. Because I know a lot of people ask like, well, when do you use it or when don't you use it? Uh, a lot of ways like I learned personally was just by learning songs mm -hmm. and learning how, you know, musicians older or better or more experienced where they placed them. And then as you play your own music or you jam with your friends, you can go back to like, oh, that's how the Beatles used it and, mm -hmm. and use it in that same kind of space. Before we run out of time, I, I think here's the big question and here's the one that everyone will, will, <laughs> is gonna be excited to hear the answer played out. How about soloing over major seventh chords in a progression? How's that different mm -hmm. than just soloing? Oh yeah, <laughs> uh -huh. I actually <laughs> have a- Tease now. Yeah. Get you to if you lay on a C major seven chord for me, and I'm just gonna play some different notes over you. Uh, you, a G, C major seven. One of you, okay. yeah. I'm sorry, C major seven, correct? Yeah. All right, here we go. Let's try this. And so what I love about soloing over is, again, it just being able to create like a space for your listener to go. Mm -hmm. And so the easiest way I found to manipulate it is, uh, is just taking whatever the root note of the chord is and just doing all like these half step intervals, you know, and just finding those, I almost call it like an Easter egg hunt on the guitar like sure just finding exactly where every little bc is on the neck and then just running through them i want to yeah. hear you do that again this time i'm going to give you a g major seventh chord and i might I, i'm gonna every time i play a chord it's gonna be g major seventh i might move it around the neck but just cook over g major seventh if you, if you don't do mind it. here we go Zoom jams, <laughs> I still see live it. jams. Yeah. Didn't know if that was technically possible, but apparently that can work. All right. So, um, well, Justice, <laughs> thank you so much for this. And Dylan, thank you as well. I think uh, I think we've played so many major seventh chords and scales yeah. and stuff. Hopefully, I thought the sound is hopefully in everyone's head. And maybe y'all that are watching, your ears will be open for it now. And you'll start picking it out of, out of records and you'll hear it here and there. Um, and we do have a lot of songs. I mean, believe me, I, I researched this. There's a lot of songs on the site that use the major seventh chord, a lot of different types of bands, a lot of different genres. So please, um, actually it's time to get to the homework. Um, and uh, I'm gonna assign it this time here. Uh, now, uh, for the the beginners, play a major seventh chord. Okay, and and you know, look up, they're on the site uh, under chords. Um, and it, in some cases it, it makes the chord easier, like with a C major chord, you know, start with your open position uh, chords, you know, there's there's your C to C major. You can do it with D really easily. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. A we showed you, or even your your uh, your three finger G. You just gotta kind of realign the fingers a little bit, but you can even do a kind of a two fingered version of that way. So so they're there. So just learn play a major seventh chord. Get your hands to do it, uh, and it, you'll probably connect with the chord a little more. For the intermediate. Play a song that incorporates major seventh chord. If you check the description below, there's some examples and you can just kind of follow that to the site. And for the advance, get your looper out, loop a major seventh progression and solo over it. Now, when we say a major seventh progression, it can be any progression as long as there is a major seventh chord in there. Right, Dylan? Yes. Okay. Yes. Let's do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, you're right. Let's do it. Let's get to the giveaway. Okay. Let's get to the giveaway. This is Dylan. What have you got for us today? Oh. Uh, well, hey, this is, this has been wonderful, and I got to hear Eugene sing, and that was worth everything. Uh, 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 no, uh, this has been an awesome show, you guys. Uh, 
justice here fantastic so Isn't it there's that brother yeah. no it's this it is what it is anyways <laughs> um okay so uh i get to do the fender play giveaway right now it's time okay so each week a very lucky fender play subscriber is automatically gonna excuse me is automatically entered to win because they got three streaks on the site uh the fender play giveaway so all you have to do is go on the site and basically use fender play get three seven minute sessions and you're automatically entered to win and then we get to pull your name you get to pick a guitar an amp or a there's all kinds of options and this week we have a winner who's i've already talked to earlier today and he already has something picked out do you guys want to know who it is yeah yes i think he's watching right now give me like a little kind of bit of major seventh major type seventh of, drum yeah <laughs> there we go good it's chris w chris w Chris W. See there, the major seventh fanfare. I love it. He told me he's picking out a black, uh, a black Strat with HSS pickup configuration. Oh, that's so tight. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah. So Chris, uh, make sure you show us what you get. We're excited. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh, Chris W. You won't be disappointed, I promise. Oh, he's congratulations. Got the one. Chris, congratulations. Wow. I, I guarantee you, you're going to love your guitar. Great choice. Enjoy that, Sucker. Uh, no, now, uh, Dylan, what else do you have for us? Yeah, so we've got uh, tons of new stuff that's always coming up on the site. Make sure you uh, check out the new Rivals tab. As far as new songs go, we've got Little Red Rooster by Rolling Stones, Last Kiss by Pearl Jam, right? Nice. And then we've got My Name is Jonas, which is a full song, which means it's got the, all the sections in it, and it's uh, you get to know all the little nooks and crannies of that one. So um, I think make I'm sure the, you guys go on there and check it out. I think I'm the instructor on two of those. Are you really? Which ones? Little Red Rooster and Last Kiss. Last Man, Kiss, yeah. Shameless plug. Shameless wow. plug, yeah. I'm you noticed there. that? Well, yeah. All plugs are shameless, really. Think about it. <laughs> Tons of new stuff on the site, though. Make sure you always check out the, the What's New tab. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Dylan, for for not just your help with the uh, the giveaways and the updates, but for your your theory knowledge. It's always a pleasure, and a huge thank you to you, Justice West, for yes. coming on the show yeah. again. We will have you again. We love having you in the rotation. I always look forward to it. Tell us what you have going on, man. Right now, I'm just working on new music. So everybody, be looking out. I'm going to be dropping a lot of great tunes this year. So yeah, that's what I got. I can't tell y'all the date because obviously. That Who would knows? like defeat the. It, I, w I want to Beyonce everybody and just <laughs> right, drop that. Right, yeah. just Don't drop it the on their face and then do yeah. another album the next week. <laughs> yes, yeah, because that is the futuristic way. That That's is how you do the, it. Yes, just but yeah, up. new music. I'm super pumped about it. I finally feel like I'm able to be myself. So it's well, awesome. I'm excited to hear all that gear. That Rhodes back there. Yeah, oh, yeah. pedals. You oh, got your oh, man. all yeah. this stuff I'm and this guitar out. is all over all of it, man. Like. It's crazy. I just sit here at this desk and just nerd out. Cool. The P bass too, probably. Oh, well, yes. um, well, thank you so much. And everybody, thank you for watching. And as always, I want you to keep safe, keep practicing, and we'll see you next week at the same time in the same virtual place. Everybody plays out on a G major seventh chord. Justice, go ahead and cook, buddy. Mm -hmm.